The Tome of Foes is a book that seeks to explain and give light and insight to some of the motivations and conflicts that shape the D&D multiverse. As dictated by the wizard Morton Kanan himself, and scribed by his apprentice Bigby. Well, at least for the most part. Now, what does that mean mechanically? Well, for players it gives them access to new character races and sub races. However, for the DM, it's a treasure trove to just add some spice to their own campaigns or a module that they may be running. It also gives them access to a horde of new and returning spicy, spicy monsters. Let's take a look, shall we? Before I dive into the bulk of this bad boy, let me just say that the art for this book is fantastic. Now the copy that I have is the variant cover, which out of the two is my favorite, but even the standard edition has a really nice cover. The variant just makes Morton Kamen not look like a total nerd. I mean, just look at him. Look at him. Now, art aside, this book is a fantastic supplement for both players and DMs. The extra added PC options are great to expand on some of the base races that are in the player's handbook, as well as the added races like the Gith and the Draugr. They add some variations for players who want to play slightly more evil-leaning PC and, you know, campaigns. Now, on the same note, the NPC options for a DM in this book is kind of staggering. Outside of going into the backstory of the blood war between the devils and the demons and this gives dms options to create everything from cults homemade demons devils dwarven strongholds factions and more with just a few dice rolls as for the bestiary this book is called the tome of foes and it's it's not used lightly i mean well it is the title of the book but there are some absolutely terrifying monsters new and old to give players a run for their money and or completely wipe the floor with them if you just want to be one of those. Also it has the gif. They're space hippos. A few of my favorite monsters who make their debut or return are the Ooblex who are like these hive mind jello monstrosities, Nightwalkers who look exactly like the name would suggest, Bone Claws who are extremely proficient Tickling, they're so good at tickling. And Alex, who are nosy folks, keep poking their nose in other people's business and got twisted. As for the background and flavor, I mean, there's plenty there with detailing and backstory of the Blood War, like I said earlier, the story with the Lord of the Nines and the devils they're constantly at war with. Aside from that, there is a swath of information on the mortal conflicts between every race. It's kind of ridiculous. You got stuff going on between the dwarves and the draugr, the war of attrition between the gith and the gith yonki, the race division within the elves, and then you got halfling and just gnomes. Who are, honestly, they're just bros and they're ready to party. I mean, there's a lot going on in this relatively small book to digest, but it's an interesting read nonetheless. If I had to nitpick one thing though, I don't like the design of the draugr. It's just me. It's not even a big one, but it's just me. That being said, I cannot just not recommend this book enough for both players and DM. With the absolute glut of information and new options that you would be getting, you'd be doing yourself a disservice by skipping this book. I'd say go pick it up. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this, why not toss me a subscription, get that bell a drop kick. Why did I do that motion for drop kick? Give that bell a drop kick. I'm DJ. You're watching Tankbox TV. Goodbye.